Good morning, everyone. My name is Thomas Dye. I am one of the account managers here at OptiView. I've been with the company for about three years, so odds are I've had a chance to talk with all of you at least once. Wanted to take a moment to thank you for taking some time to join me today for OptiView's Access Control webinar. I know how busy some of you are and uh, how far out you can be scheduled, so thank you again for joining me today. For those of you who may be new to OptiView, welcome. We've been in the industry for over 20 years providing CCTV, weatherproof solutions, solar solutions, and access control to our group of dealers across the nation. Access control is something we have more recently integrated into our lineup of equipment we provide, and I'm excited to share some of that with you today. So what is access control and what are we going to be going over today? We're going to take a quick dive into our access control product lineup and at the end of the slideshow, we'll take a look at a live demo showing how to set up our four door master control panel with a reader, a door strike, a request to exit button, and we'll add some users to make it all come together and work. So what is access control? Access control is the selective restriction of access to a specific place. Whether it's a door strike at your office's front door or a mag lock using uh, securing communications equipment in an enclosure. Here's a quick example of a modern day access control system installed. You have your control panel, request to exit buttons, mag locks, proximity readers or keypads. All of these tie back to OptiView's VMS software, giving you the power to add and name doors, create different departments for users, set time zones and schedules for individual users, and even remotely control the doors. Next, we're going to take a quick look at OptiView's access control product lineup. We have a few different images of our control panels, different readers, request to exit buttons, mag locks, door strikes, our USB programmer with some cards and fob, and some accessories. OptiView's four-door master control panel is expandable up to 64 doors using the two and four door slave controller modules. This unit supports 200,000 cards and 150,000 records. It offers a TCP IP interface and you're able to program it using the web GUI or OptiView's VMS. At the bottom, you can see the four and two door slave controller modules. OptiView also offers a four-door standalone unit that comes in two different variations. One is an enclosed and a secure lockbox. The other is a freestanding unit. The four-door standalone controllers are an excellent choice for smaller locations that have a maximum of four doors. This unit supports 100,000 cards and 150,000 records. It also includes a TCP IP interface and can be programmed using OptiView's VMS software. Here's a look at some of our different proximity readers and keypads. We carry IP67 weatherproof, some vandal proof, and some combo keypad readers. OptiView carries both indoor and outdoor rated readers to suit your customers' needs. OptiView also carries a standalone reader that does not require a master control panel. This unit supports 30,000 cards and 150,000 records. It's TCP IP compatible. It includes one door sensor and exit button input, one relay output, 
and is a combo reader and pen pad. This unit can be programmed using OptiView's VMS software. We offer multiple request to exit buttons, including physical push activated buttons and a few different designs. Some of these push activated buttons do include a time delay. We also offer multiple touch free request to exit solutions, including a mag lock with a built in motion sensor. Now let's take a look at some of our different mag locks. We offer a 150 pound, which has been used with our ArmorLogix line of NEMA enclosures, a 600 pound, and an 1100 pound. We also carry a variety of mounting brackets. OptiView also offers mag locks with some specialty features, like a signal out to let you know if the mag lock successfully locked, a weatherproof design to allow outdoor installation, time delay built in to guarantee the time a door will be held unlocked, and finally a 600 pound mag lock with a built in motion sensor. Here are some of our different door strikes we have to offer. The lineup includes door strikes that are normally open or normally closed, and some of them include a special communication sensor to verify the door was closed and not left open. If the sensor does not detect that the door has been closed properly, our VMS software will give you an alarm letting you know which door was not closed. OptiView carries a two-channel dedicated power supply to be used for your motion sensors, mag locks or door strikes, and even request to exit buttons that require power, like the backlit or no-touch buttons. Proximity readers and keypads are connected to the control panel using a four-pair cable. For example, CAT6, which has four pairs, is 24 gauge and can be ran up to 100 meters, or you can use a lower gauge cable with four pairs to increase your distance. Here's an example of the wiring from inside the locked door with access control installed. You have your mag lock, which requires a pair for data and a pair for power, uh, and a request to exit button that's backlit, which requires a pair for data and a pair for power. Door strikes will use the pairs in the same way as the mag locks, but you may have a request to exit button that is simply acting as a switch and does not require power, which you would only use one pair for the data. Here's an overview of the four-door master control panel's connection diagram to give you an idea of where everything ties into. You have your alarm inputs and outputs on the left, four reader connections with power and data at the top left, four door control outputs for your mag locks or door strikes at the top right, exit button, door sensor, and lock tongue feedbacks on the right hand side, and your ethernet bits are at the bottom. We also offer a USB card programmer to make setting up users a breeze, along with some different proximity cards and fobs, depending on what fits your customer's needs. Some of the accessories we offer include cable, basic door loops, 
door loops for more dismounting, and even tappet contacts. From here, we're going to hop into some screenshots of Optu's VMS software, and then we'll take a look at the live demo. Today, we'll be doing an in-depth dive of many of the features. For any features that are not covered in today's demo that you would like more information on, please reach out to us to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment. From the main screen, you can go directly into the access control section of our software. The default screen is the console, where you can open and close doors, view logs to see users who have scanned their proximity card or entered code at the pin pad, alarms that may have triggered like your door sensor uh, showing a door not closing properly. You can also take a look at user's information at the bottom right of the screen. The second tab in the access control section is users, where you'll add, edit, and remove users individually or in batches. This is a section we'll, uh, take, we'll dive deeper into during the live demo. The next tab is user settings, where you can set different time zones, which are times users are allowed or not allowed in the building. Holiday for holiday scheduling. Access level for setting different access permissions for groups. User rights for viewing and editing different departments that you place your users in. Some of the features we also have include first card unlock, multi card unlock, any passback, inner door lock, and remote verification. Again, for the features we are not covering today, please contact us for a one on one discussion. The fourth tab in the access control section is events. This is where you can set up and view alarms. You can even use this section to set cameras to record when users access doors. The final tab in our access control section is log. Here, you can search, view, and export logs of users' activity within your access control system. Now that we've gone over a quick overview of the equipment and software, let's jump into a live demo where we'll be adding a four-door master control panel to OptiView's VMS software. We'll add some users, change users' permissions, assign users to different departments and doors, we'll program some cards, and combine a camera to work with one of our doors. Going to new tab here to show you what we're working with. So we have our master control panel, got it wired to a proximity reader keypad combo. We have a request to exit button. And instead of a mag lock and motion detect, we actually have a door strike for this example. Wiring diagrams and guides can be found on our website. And please contact us if you have any questions. The first thing we need to do is initialize it. So we'll open a new tab. Go to the default IP address. can set a new password. We can uncheck auto check for updates for this example.
Now that the device is initialized, we need to change its IP address from the default to whatever IP address we'd like to set it to. To do so, we're going to log in, go to System Setup, and we're under the TCP IP setting. And right now we have an available address of 91, so I'm going to set that, press OK. It's going to change, log me out, and take me, redirect me back to that IP address we set it to. So just to confirm everything's working, we can log back in using the password we set in the initialization. Boom, we're online. So now that we have that set up, let's hop over to the VMS and get it added. So the first thing we're going to do is actually check out Live View. And the reason for this is I want to create a new group, which I've already created here, called Access Control. You can do so by right-clicking, clicking New Group, and giving it a name. This helps keep your access control organized away from your cameras. Now we're ready to add our access control panel to our OptiView VMS software. We can click on Devices. And from here, there's two ways to add it. We can auto search. And there you'll see it right here, 91. Or we can add it manually. We can put it under the new group we created, use our login credentials, and now we have it added to our VMS. To ensure that the access control system works during the proper hours, we want to sync the time. To do so, we can go to device configuration, select our access control panel on the left. Under system, general, and we can sync it to PC. So now our access control system is added to our VMS and the time is synced. Let's go into the access control section. And we can see by dropping this down, that we've got our four doors. Let's rename this door. We'll call it Front Lobby. We can even go into the configuration of the door by right clicking and clicking door configuration where we can set things like the unlock hold interval. So when a card is scanned, the, the door will be held unlocked for two seconds. Let's change it to three. And you can even turn on the door sensor here to notify you when the door is not properly closed. So now let's create some departments for our users. We can do that by going to the Users tab. We can right click, add a department. Let's do Day Crew. And we'll make one called Night Crew. Before we add any cards, we want to make sure we're using the right card type. 
We can use that by clicking the ID card, ensuring that we have ID checked. And for this example, we're going to use decimal. We also support hexadecimal and IC cards. Now we're going to add a couple of users. We can do that by clicking batch, or we can manually add. Let's click the day crew and add someone. Start by giving them a user ID, which is numerical. Uh, so, you know, for example, a company with a thousand employees, uh, you could start at 1001, or companies that have 100 employees, you could start at 1001. So we'll give them a name now. And we can see that the day crew is selected. Here's where you could use the USB programmer. I'm going to manually enter these to show you how it works. And if we want to give them a, an unlock password, we can do so here. We'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can even add additional details for users here. So now we've added someone to the day crew. Let's add someone to the night crew. And just to make it easier, let's just use that one, two, three, four, five, six, and see what happens. So we get this pop-up, password exists, please enter again. And the reason for that is this unlock password is unique. So if you wanted to have a general password that unlocks everything, you could use it once for all accounts, or you could give users each their own individual password. So we'll go backwards and do 6543211. So now we have a user in the day crew, and we have a user in the night crew. Now we can create some time zones to say when they're allowed or not allowed to access the reader. You can do so by clicking on time zone. And we have our day shift and our night shift that I've already created here. You can add more or delete by using these buttons at the top. And if we want to edit the day shift, we can click the pencil icon where you have two ways to change the times. You can click and drag to add or click and drag to remove time that's already been added. Or you can use the cogwheel on the right side. Let's set the day crew to from 8 in the morning until 5 at night. And we'll make that available Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Save it, and we'll do the same thing with night shift, but later. Let's do this from 5 until 11. We'll save that. From here, we can go and do some access levels to add the users to the time zones. So we'll go to access level. We'll select add. And let's give this one a name of day shift access. And this is where we'll be able to select which doors they're able to access. So we can select the front lobby since that's the door we want them to go into. Make sure we've selected the proper time zone. 
which will be day shift. We can press OK. And we'll do the same thing for the night shift. Select our night shift from the time zone drop down we created. We'll also allow them in the front lobby. Press OK. Now that we have these different access created, we need to add the users. We can do so by clicking the user button here. And from our drop down list, we can select the day crew members we want to add to the day shift access. See it populates here. We can check, add, or if we want to add someone by searching for their name, we can search for John Smith that we created, check, and add. Now we can go back to the console. And when we scan, you can see that it unlocked. It was Thomas Dye that unlocked it, and it locked again. And if we scan John Smith's card, we get a time zone error, showing that John Smith is not allowed in at this time. So now let's say we want to view cameras when someone scans their card. Let's look at the cameras we have here. We'll go back to our live view. We've got a PTZ camera, and we've got a 360 view of that lobby. So for this example, we're going to use some presets under the PTZ. You can see we've created home and door. When we see where door goes, It'll show us the front. So let's say every time someone scans at that front lobby, we want that camera to zoom over and see who's there. To do so, we go back to Access, go to our event. We want to Select the door, front lobby. This instance, it'll be a normal event. We'll call it card unlock. Turn it on. And we want to link a video. So you have some presets. You can view multiple cameras when this event happens. For this case, let's do a custom split. We'll do edit and create a custom view for two cameras. So here we're able to drag which cameras we want to view when the cards are scanned. So now that we've added those cameras that we want to view when a card is scanned, let's save it. And let's see what happens when we scan the card. You can see we get a separate pop-up window, and that PTZ camera we had set to preset 2 zoomed over to see what was coming in the door. That's going to wrap it up for the Access Control webinar. I want to thank you again for joining us. If you guys have any additional questions, I'll be staying on the call for a few minutes to help answer. If it's something I don't have an immediate answer to, we can schedule a call for a different time. Thanks again, and have a great day.